Hi, I'm Shane, and this is a recording of a talk I gave at Databricks on April 20th about effective instruction tuning, data methods, and emergent abilities with my colleagues at Google. So this is a talk in three parts, but this recording is only covering the first part on data and methods, um, which is a collection of results from two papers, the Fawn Collection and Scaling Instruction Tuning, which release scripts to uh, generate the Fawn Collection dataset and also the Fawn T5 models released in this work and then results in Fawn Palm, which is a Google internal model, which unfortunately couldn't be released. So before we dive in, what is instruction tuning? At a high level, the goal of instruction tuning is to teach a model to follow instructions, allowing to perform new or unseen tasks from instructions it hadn't seen at training time. So if our instruction is answer this question, and the question is, what is the capital of France? Before instruction tuning, a model might uh, not understand the expectation to answer the question directly and succinctly, and instead it might continue to generate plausible texts like the answer to this question has varied through history before the fifth century AD, dot, dot, dot. Or it might just choose to develop a quiz like A, London, B, Paris, C, Berlin, and without answering, keep developing new questions and plausible multiple choice answers. But really what we want is the model to understand the expectation of the user to give a direct simple answer like the capital of, of France is Paris. So how is instruction tuning different from alignment tuning, which you might've heard from OpenAI's work? Well, the way that I'm defining it uh, herein is that alignment tuning is instruction tuning, but with a couple additional ingredients, which are um, they vary the tasks to include more open-ended generation and creative tasks than traditional uh, instruction tuning uh, methods that are open source. And they also incorporate an element of human feedback where humans choose which paragraphs or generations they prefer. So the model can use that signal to further improve its generations. So how do we um, achieve instruction tuning? Basically we show the model thousands of different types of instructions and hope that it learns to infer the meaning of a new instruction from the thousands that it's already seen. So here we have a quick survey of publicly documented instruction tuning methods. It's definitely not comprehensive. And uh, we wrote this up in 20, at the end of 2022, but it gives you an idea of the various waves of um, works that, awesome works that preceded this one. So earlier on, you had collections or compilations of tasks for multitask fine tuning efforts. And that led to the first set of instruction tuning methods where works were explicitly trying to get the models to learn uh, to perform a new and unseen instructions. And the most recent wave of work is deepening this research into and broadening it into other areas like multilingual instruction tuning or using synthetic or more alignment oriented diverse tasks and data. Um, the Flan Collection, is the bottom row of this table if you're looking to compare it to previous works. So here you can see the paper from which most, most of these results are um, incorporated and the other, my colleagues that uh, contributed to this work. So to design stronger instruction tuning, we, over, we go over five different methods. The first is scaling to 1800 tasks, which at the time was uh, the most that prior work had done adding chain of thought fine tuning data to this uh, collection of instruction tuning tasks, um, enriching the diversity of tasks from existing data sets using input and version, and then at training time mixing both zero shot and few shot templates together. And lastly, balancing the different sources of data is important to achieving strong results. So looking at these one by one, First, what is the Flan Collection? It's a collection of collections of other great works like the Prompt Source T0 set of tasks, Natural Instructions V2 set of tasks, which you see enumerated here, um, former Flan tasks mixed in with dialogue and program synthesis, as well as some reasoning tasks. There are many ways to count the number of tasks uh, and different definitions, but by the way that we counted, that would approximate 1800 tasks. And um, we did hold out from fine tuning 
a set of 57 college exams known as the Massive Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark, some of the big bench hard tasks, and then some multilingual benchmarks as well. And scripts to generate this data are uh, available, and we provide the link in the last slide. So what is the effect of scaling fine-tuning tasks to, at this, at this point in time, an unprecedented number of tasks, 1,800? We look at that by incrementing the, a random set of tasks one by one that we have. So first eight tasks, 25, 50, 100, 200, 400, for each of the model sizes that we're looking at and see how the performance varies. And even on a log scale, we see that uh, with the exception of the very smallest model, all of these models, which are about under 13 billion parameters are benefiting from having more tasks and although they're seeing some diminishing returns, they're getting the most performance when we include all the tasks, indicating that there's room to still increase the diversity um, and number of task string instruction fine tuning, especially if you move to higher models. And on the left side, we uh, see how this performance varies for held in tasks, i.e. as we add in more tasks, maybe they will distract from the existing tasks that we care about that are already in fine tuning. But we actually see that there's uh, very little effect there, although um, the best performance is achieved at around 200 to 400 tasks. But there's not much diminishment after that. And we expect for larger models, um, there would be much more room or capacity to benefit from more tasks as well. So now let's look at enriching the number of tasks by using input and version on existing data sets. So what does that mean? So the first row here shows you for a typical chain of thought question answering data set, you're given the, the model's given the question and it's asked to generate or taught to generate a chain of thought explanation followed by an answer. But given that you have these three components, you can permute their order to create six other or uh, six total variations um, of input, output, input target pairs. And so we can create a different instruction for each of these. So for the bottom one, we could say, given this answer, generate a question and explanation that are plausible. And so with the same data, we can produce different tasks um, and create, create greater variety uh, in the tasks that are present from the same data set. So we weren't sure that this would be effective, although other work had done it. Um, all prior work had focused on fewer tasks. And when we got to 1800, we didn't know whether incorporating more diversity from the same data sets would be still beneficial given that we already have so, so much diversity. The third thing that we explore is mixing template types at training. So I'm gonna show you what this means. Given the same data set, uh, you can formulate it with different templates. So here we see a zero shot template. Um, that is not chain of thought. So there's no exemplars. It just says, here's the instruction in orange. Can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? And then it's asked to generate the answer, yes or no. In this case, yes. This same example could be templatized uh, in a few shot setting where a different exemplar is provided first. And then the same examples in the first part is provided here. So this first exemplar helps the model see the pattern um, of how it's supposed to respond to the question. And so this is a few shot example, um, templatized example of this same zero shot version. And the same way that this example can come in two templates, it can also uh, come in a chain of thought template. So this is zero shot chain of thought, and this is few shot chain of thought where we change the instruction to ask for the explanation, which is in blue and um, in few shots, chain of thought in this bottom right, we can see uh, the first exemplar has a chain of thought style instruction, the question, the explanation, the answer, and then the question we care about, uh, or the instruction we care about, the question we care about, the explanation, and the answer. So we did an experiment where we just looked at varying the percentage of training data that was zero shot versus few shot templatized. So given a set of data sets at 0%, all of the training data appears 
as a zero in a zero shot format. But at 100%, all of the data appears as a few shot template. And so what we expected was that there would be a trade-off in performance. So if all the training data was in a zero shot template, then it would do best in the zero shot evaluation, the red line setting. And then the red line would decrease the more few shot templates um, represented were represented in the proportion of training data. And similarly for few shot evaluation, we expected a trade-off uh, or we expected that uh, performance would decrease the more zero shot templates you included. But to our surprise, we actually found that a mixture of both uh, improved results from having only zero shot or few shot templates at training, often by two to three points. And while this had been done in Instruct GPT paper, they never benchmarked or discussed the value um, of doing this. And so for us, it was a useful finding to see that incorporating both uh, improved both task diversity and ultimately the performance in both these settings. Lastly, we look at balancing mixtures. So mixtures of data. Now, we didn't have a very principled way of doing this. Um, we'd refer you to the Facebook's OPT IML work, which did a much more extensive um, examination of how to balance the various sources of data. But we simply removed subsets of our data that we had clustered according to various sources or sets of tasks. So dialogue, program synthesis, chain of thought, or these three uh, sub collections. And we find that we can rank them generally by how important they are based on how far the performance decreases when we remove them. And this led to us um, having a more informed final weighting after some further experiments. And it shows that when you do weight your results, you get better results uh, than if you had omitted any source of data or if you had equally weighted them altogether. And so here's our final results table where we see that the final Flan T5XL generally gets the best results for both held in and held, uh, held in and held out tasks. By removing any one of the methods described, performance generally decreases a bit. And we also compared Flan T5XL to um, the same base model fine-tuned on different subsets or prior work subsets um, of the instruction tuning data and found that generally we uh, had a decent boost on overall performance using our methods. If you'd like to read more about uh, this work, most of it is discussed in the Flan collection, and there's some additional results in scaling instruction fine tuned language models. And we also provide links to some of the assets described uh, in this presentation. Thank you so much for listening. And if you're interested in hearing more about this, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Thank you.